OK, so here are the answers to the questions at the end of the previous chapter. So why don't you pause the video while you tick them off and you can carry on with the next chapter, which is... Use and abuse of drugs. The definition of a drug is a substance which affects our body chemistry. So how do we go about testing new drugs? Well, they have to be tested for toxicity, that's, are they poisonous, for efficacy, which means do they work, do they actually cure the disease, and to find the correct dose. They're tested initially on cells, tissues, and live animals in the lab. If they pass these tests, they're then tested on healthy volunteers with a very low dose. If they're found to be safe, then they're tested on a small number of patients to see if it actually cures the disease. There are then further trials to find the correct dose. Now the trials may be double blind trials. This means that neither the patients nor the doctors involved in the trials know who's got the new drug and who's got the old drug. The only people who know are the researchers who are controlling the trials. A placebo may be given to the control group. A placebo is an identical treatment that's given, but it doesn't contain the new drug. And these are all techniques that are used to ensure that every trial has a control, something to compare it to. So what do we mean by a control or a control group? Now this doesn't mean the same as a control variable. A control variable is one of the variables that might affect your experiment, so you have to keep it the same. That's control variable. But an experimental control is different. It's a parallel experiment that you run that's done for comparison. So you have something to compare your experimental group with. So comparison, for comparison, is a key word to get into your answer of what is a control. Statins and thalidomide. These are two classes of drugs that you need to know about. Statins may be given for heart and circulatory diseases. These are the cholesterol lowering drugs. Thalidomide was a drug that was originally developed as a sleeping pill but it was also found to relieve morning sickness in pregnant women. So it was prescribed in the 1960s for morning sickness. The problem with thalidomide though was that it hadn't been tested properly and it hadn't been tested on pregnant animals. So there were disastrous consequences and some of the women who'd taken it during pregnancy gave birth to deformed babies, babies that were born with quite severe limb abnormalities. Now its use is very carefully controlled. It's only used in treating leprosy. It changed the way that drugs were tested. Recreational drugs. Now the definition of recreational drugs is drugs which are taken because people like the effect on the body, not for a medical reason. An example is alcohol and nicotine, which are both legal recreational drugs. There are some recreational drugs which are illegal which we'll have a look at in a minute. It's important to remember though that legal recreational drugs like alcohol and nicotine have a large impact on society because so many people use them. There are illegal recreational drugs, for example, cannabis, ecstasy, heroin. These can cause problems with the heart and circulatory systems, which is not well known. And it's also not well known that cannabis smoke does have a link with mental illness. Addiction. Now, because drugs change the chemical processes in the body, they can cause people to become dependent upon them, which means that they can suffer withdrawal symptoms if they're deprived. Cocaine and heroin are very addictive drugs. Performance enhancing drugs. Now these are taken by sports people to improve their sporting performance. For example, stimulants, they might take these to raise the body rates, for example, to raise the heart rate or the breathing rate before a race. They might take anabolic steroids. These drugs increase muscle growth. These drugs may be legal drugs 
or they may be illegal drugs, but either way they're all banned by the relevant sporting governing bodies. OK, so that's the end of this chapter. Hopefully you've printed off all the notes, so you can have a go at these questions now. You'll find the answers at the beginning of the next chapter. Good luck!